Hi folks, Matt Bullock, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco here. Today I'm going to walk you through installing a power over Ethernet PoE power supply in an integrated services router 4451. Uh, now PoE is a little bit unique in the ISRs in that we do have switch modules, Ethernet switch modules, that can provide PoE to end devices like access points, cameras, IP phones, those sorts of things. But those switch modules will only provide PoE power if you have a PoE power supply in the router itself. It's been true on ISRs for several generations, no different with the latest ISR 4000 series. Now I'm gonna walk you through the installation on a 4451. Now the procedure is gonna be exactly the same on a 4351, which is the uh, little brother uh, to this guy, basically exactly the same mechanical, exactly the same chassis. The biggest difference is that the 4400 series supports dual power supplies. So while you'll follow the same procedure on a 4351, you will of course have to turn off the router and completely shut it down. 4451, we can do something kind of unique since it's a dual power supply. We can add a PoE power supply while the system is running without taking it down at all. So I'm gonna show you that uh, today. Now, let's take a look at what you get. So when you order a PoE power supply for a 4451 or a 4351, Cisco is going to send you a big box. Now, this is a huge box for a power supply for a regularly small router. Um, what you're going to get inside of it is going to confuse you because it's not your standard power supply. Of course you get your standard pink foam, you get your nice new power supply here. It looks a lot like the power supply that's already in the router there. Uh, the biggest difference that you'll notice is that it has a little telephone with PoE on the, uh, on the faceplate uh, and it also has a gray handle. The gray handle is how we recognize that this is a PoE power supply uh, for the system. The black handle, uh, non-PoE. You're also going to get something else in here. And this is unique to the 4451 and 4351. This is the PoE conversion module. Uh, both of these are going to go inside of the router. What you have here is basically a 1000 watt, 5 volt and 12 volt DC power supply. So it's going to provide the 5 volts, the 12 volts for the system itself. Um, what's already in the system, the black handled power supply, the non-POE power supply, is a 500 watt. It's actually 480, but 500 watts for, uh, for all intents and purposes power supply. That's also going to provide 5 volts and 12 volts for the system. Now this guy, when it goes into the system, the POE conversion module, it's going to take that 5 volt and 12 volt supply uh, and convert about half of it, about 500 watts, into 48 volts DC to deliver to the PoE module, the PoE capable module. So you need both of these to get PoE capability inside of the system. We sell them as a bundle. You can't buy one without the other. Uh, so you don't have to think about that when you're ordering it. Just be aware that when you order a PoE power supply for a 4451 or a 4351, uh, you're going to get two pieces of metal. Uh, and that can be a little bit confusing, a little bit daunting for folks the first time you see it. All right, let's take a look at how we do this. All right, so we're ready to start the install. We have a running operational 4451 here. You can see all nice, happy, flashy, or solid green lights. That's how you know the system is good. Of course, you can hear the fan noise uh, in the system. You want to make sure that you have everything that you need uh, before you get started. We've got our new 1000 watt power supply, our new PoE converter, and the only tool that we need is a standard number two Phillips head screwdriver. Um, that's all you need uh, to do this install. You can do it while the system is running, but you do want to be very, very careful uh, there is live voltage and live current inside of the system. Um, for the most part, this is not stuff that you can touch with your bare fingers, but it would be very possible to take a Phillips head screwdriver and insert it into the system and cause yourself a nasty shock or certainly damage the router, probably more importantly, damage the router, something you don't want to do. Um, so just be careful, be aware of that while you're doing that. Also be careful uh, with the, uh, the power switch here. Uh, the power switch is in a, in a very vulnerable position uh, it's normally in a nice protected area here behind the bezel, but as soon as you remove the bezel, uh, this becomes a very dangerous area uh, for accidentally hitting the power switch. I've done it a couple times myself. So, of course, the first step is just pop off the bezel. This is just held on here with some friction clips. Uh, of course, be careful with this. This is relatively thin plastic. It's not meant to be taken off every day, uh, and you can break these clips off, and uh, you don't want to have to go explain why you need to uh, buy a new bezel uh, for the system. Of course, 4451, we do have complete and total redundancy for power. That means we have a power supply on either side. A 4351, if you're working with that, you'll just have a solid piece of metal here. There's no connectors, uh, nothing inside of there. You can't take a Dremel and make a 4351 
a, uh, a dual power system. We also have two bays, dual bays for the PoE conversion module. So we also have redundancy. If one of these happens to fail, you'll also get uh, full redundancy. The, uh, the power supplies are also bussed together. Uh, so we have a left and a right uh, PoE conversion module, but they're not tied uh, to either one of the left or the right power supplies. I can put in uh, a PoE power supply in the right bay and a PoE conversion module in the left or, or vice versa. Doesn't matter. It's all just one large bus strip, uh, which you can actually see inside of the system if you uh, take a flashlight and uh, look inside of there. Okay. So with ISRs, the systems will keep running. They'll stay operational as long as they don't overheat. Uh, so until we reach a critical temperature threshold, uh, the system will stay up, will stay happy. It won't stay happy. It'll, of course, alarm you if we remove the fan tray right now. So that's useful if you have a fan failure, multiple fan failure. As long as your ambient temperature is enough to cool the router down, uh, it will stay up and operational. Uh, that means that you can swap out a fan tray if you do have a fan failure. It means that you can add or remove or replace a PoE conversion module behind the fan tray uh, as long as you do so quickly enough that the system doesn't overheat. Now, quickly is a very subjective term. It's a very relative term uh, because it depends on your ambient temperature. Uh, in most environments, you've got three minutes at least, uh, usually more like five to ten minutes to replace uh, anything behind there. But you definitely want to make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row ready to go before you take that fan tray off, if you're doing this in a running system. Of course, if the system's shut down, you're perfectly fine. Take as long as you want. Uh, so to get inside of the fan tray, all you have to do here is just remove three screws. Uh, they're actually captive screws, so you just have to loosen them. One on either side of the fan tray here. And then one in the lower middle. This is a black screw. Uh, it's actually painted black for a reason. Uh, that's because this is the only screw that's visible uh, outside of the bezel, the only three of these screws. Uh, and some of the early versions of this guy, uh, you could actually see that silver screw through the bezel. So we, uh, we painted it black so that you, uh, you can't really see it through there. Okay, so we're ready to remove the fan tray. I'm going to go ahead and remove this blank for the, uh, uh, for the new power supply just so that it's not in our way. Uh, be very careful about this power switch and just pull the fan tray right on out. Things get a lot quieter. Uh, you can see the system is flashing a nice warning light. It is not happy with us right now, but it is still up and running. So, uh, you know, that's that's cool and all. Uh, there, You will see in here two PoE power supply bays. Uh, you'll also see up here uh, a little metal cover that says do not remove during network operation. That's where you can find the compact flash, the actual boot flash uh, of a 4451. Uh, and, and that's hidden back here because we are running a Linux operating system. It is a live functioning operating system, so you don't want to upgrade that while the system is up and operational. We kind of hide it back here for you uh, so that you can't just pop it out. So I'm just going to remove the cover on one of these PoE converter bays. Again, I just loosen the screw. It's a captive screw, so it's not going anywhere. And then pull out this cover. Now this is where you want to be really careful. There are uh, some active voltages, some active current inside of there, uh, and you don't want to go sticking your, your uh, screwdriver in there. You uh, should not be able to stick your uh, normal human-sized fingers in there, uh, but you could certainly stick a tool in there. Starting the PoE converter, fairly straightforward. You just stick this guy in here. And then there's a little lever and a screw to help you get it seated. Get that all nice and tight. A little bit of screw tightness there, and we're done. We're ready to button it up. That was really just a couple of minutes uh, and uh, plenty of time for the system to, uh, to be without its fan. Stick the fans back in, they power back up, and the timer stops. So uh, the system was not happy with us, but certainly no damage was done. Uh, and you can actually see that it's actually gone all, all the way back to clearing that alarm and uh, we've got all nice green lights on the uh, on the front panel as well. Just simply tighten up these fan screws. And then last but not least, we will put in our PoE power supply. And then the uh, bezel. Of course, you can put in the power supply after the bezel. Um, it's just a little bit cleaner. I'm not uh, not worrying about hitting the bezel. And that is it. You've got a couple of spare pieces of metal here. Uh, turn them into Christmas ornaments. But uh, 
Uh, they're completely spare. You don't need them for uh, really for anything now. That's it. We're up and going. And uh, just one more thing, a little close up here so that you can see uh, what's actually going on. You can see what the uh, the LEDs actually read out uh, when you're, you're using the system. You can see that we have a green power supply unit zero, PSU zero. That's the, uh, the guy on our left here. Uh, we have no light on the PSU one. That's because we haven't powered up the uh, PoE power supply yet, or the 1,000 watt power supply, I should say. Um, so we don't actually have any light, any status light here. Uh, and then we also have a green under the PoE one light. So what that actually means is that we've actually recognized we're actually powering that PoE one module already, and that's getting power off of the uh, 480 watt power supply. We're not, it's not enough power for us to generate PoE for the uh, actual switches that are in the system, but we do recognize that that PoE one is there. He's operational, he's green, he's nice and happy. And if we uh, just supply regular power to our 1000 watt power supply, you can see that the power supply immediately goes green. That's because this is the, uh, uh, the power supply telling us that the line voltage is good. And then a few seconds later, we actually get a PSU one green light. So the system has recognized that that power supply is good. He's operational. He's nice and happy.